Hello everyone and very welcome to the channel. It's quite late here in Sydney at the moment, but I'm so excited that I'm wide awake to share this video with you. In this video, I am going to explain a concept which seems quite complicated, but I am sure that after watching this video, you will be a hero when it comes to that concept. That concept is the latent space in stable diffusion models. Stable diffusion models are known for generating high quality images from text. These models work on images in latent space and then produce an image in pixel space. In this video, I am going to explain what exactly this latent space and latent images in as simple words as possible with a hands-on demo. Before I move forward, let me give a huge shout out to Mast Compute who are spon sponsoring the VM and GPU for this video. If you are looking to rent a GPU on good prices, I will drop the link to their website and a coupon code of 50% discount on a range of GPUs. Okay, so let's carry on with our foray into this. Now, in order to get started, I will be using the tool ConfiUI. If you don't know what Comfy UI is, please go to my channel, go to search and just type Comfy UI and watch this first video which says easiest tutorial on Comfy UI. This tutorial will enable you to install Comfy UI in as easy way as possible in a record time. So please watch that out. If you are following along, please install that Comfy UI first and then keep following. So I already have this Comfy UI installed and launched and I am going to show you what we are going to do here. So first and foremost, let's get our stable diffusion model with load checkpoint node. Remember in Comfy UI, everything is a node. For stable diffusion model, there are heaps of them. For this video, I'm just going to go with this very usual Dream Shaper 8 model. And if you just go to Hugging Face, type dream shaper there are heaps of them just get any one of your choice i have randomly selected this model dump from this person all i have done is i have gone here i right click on it and then save link as and i have saved it in the checkpoint directory where in the models folder of comfy ui that's all i have done that's it so it's already there now, first step, let's get this diffusion model in Comfy UI. For that, double click here anywhere. And then just search for checkpoint. And then just click on this load checkpoint node here. So we have loaded it. And then we already have selected this dream sh shaper model automatically. Now this load checkpoint node, make sure that you have your model and then you have your VAE. What is VAE? I will be describing it shortly, so just hold on. So right now we have loaded our model onto our Comfy UI. Then let's grab an image from our local system with local image or load image node. Double click again, and then simply type load image or just select the load image from here. Let me put it slightly above so that we will have enough space here. I'm just going to make it a little bit short then choose file to upload. Let's select any image from your local system. I have just grabbed this Komodo Dragons photo here just for the test purposes. Remember, we are trying to learn what is latent space and latent image in this video. Now the image which you see here, this is a pixel image which we can see, right? So remember that this image is in the pixel space, we can see it. And we have loaded it here. Now let's first check tensor values of this pixel image with an, another node called as a debug tensor shape node. Let me try to explain what I'm saying. So double click and then just type here debug and then click on debug tensor shape and you will get this node. Simply connect this image to this tensor here. That's done. And in order to run it, let's click on Q prompt and it's run. Let me open my terminal window here. So you see, or let me just do it again so that you would know what is happening. So let me run QPrompt again, show the terminal. Let's wait for it. Okay, 
it is coming it is coming it is just taking bit of a time and now it has displayed the tensors here so this matrix or the shape is the tensor as you can see on your screen now let's try to read what exactly this does so this debug tensor shape shows dimensional size or tensor in other words of various objects in terminal used by comfy ui so when i have run this debug tensor shape by connecting this image from load image it has shown me the shape or tensors or the dimensions of this image so there are four parts of it so the first number is a batch size which means number of images so in this case we just have one image that is why the value is one then the second and third is the height and width of the image so height is 296 width is 488 and the last one is the number of color channel red green and blue so that is what the shape is which it is showing at the moment from debug tensor shape now if you want to manipulate this image with the stable diffusion model we cannot do this in this pixel space because that is not understood by stable diffusion model we have to convert this pixel image into latent image in the latent space so what is latent latent is the compressed or smaller representation of the original pixel image that stable diffusion models can actually use and understand latent's literal meaning is hidden we cannot see hidden or latent because it's so small it's so compressed for us <clears throat> but stable diffusion models can see it and understand it because latent is small and compressed so there is a loss of quality in image representation when it's in the latent space that is why it is always recommended that not to convert images from latent space to pixel space again and again and again during your process and rather do all the manipulation of image in the latent space and towards the very end use the VAE decoder to convert images from latent space to the pixel space and now is the time to understand this VAE which you see as a last output in this load checkpoint node VAE stands for variational auto encoder this is a thing which bring images to and from the latent space so right now as you can see in the load image node we have this pixel image if we want to convert it into latent image or we send this image from latent from pixel space to latent space we will use the VAE encoder which will encode this pixel image into latent image so let's double click here and then simply type VAE and you will see that we have VAE encode node click on it and there you go we have VAE encode node so now this takes uh, pixel image and converts it into latent image so let's first try to uh, connect it so in, now what I'm going to do I'm just going to attach this image from load image to pixels because this is these are the pixels so VE encode is taking pixels as input this is a pixel image and for VAE which is another model which is embedded into this dream shaper we need a VAE model for this in order to actually convert this so we are connecting the VAE from load checkpoint to VAE encode and now let's co connect this latent to tensor so remember I said that VAE encoder variation auto encoder convert this pixel image into latent image so we are taking pixel as input we are giving latent as output so this is all we are doing let's run it and then we will see the matrix value in the tensor and then we will explain so let me run it let's go through the terminal now you see it has produced another set of tensors but this tensor shape is for the latent image now the arrangement of these are a bit different than the above one so let me try to explain the first one is the batch size so still we have one image so we have one as a first value four in this case is just a color channel so just leave it these last two are very important so third one is the height and fourth one is the width of the image now if you compare this to 
the height and width of the original image, you can immediately see that both the height and width of the latent image has decreased a lot. So what has happened here? So what has happened here is that this VE encode has downscaled it by dividing these two values by 8. So 296 divided by 8 is 37 and 488 divided by 8 is 61 and you can check it on the calculator. So what is happening here is that the VAE encoder has compressed it or downscaled it by dividing it into by 8 and it has downscaled it 8 times. That is why it's always a good idea to work with image sizes which are multiple of 8. Also make sure to use image sizes according to models recommendations as models are trained as per specific image size. Anyway, now you know how the images are compressed in the latent space and we can't see them because they are compressed by the multiples of 8. And we have just seen it with the tensor value and that is why I was showing you this debug tensor shape. As we cannot see this latent image, so if we want to see it again, we need to upscale this image which has already been encoded with the help of VAE and for that we would need another node which is called as VAE decode. So this is we have now so we have this is VAE decode. Now for that one all you need to do is to simply you see this is encoded image this is a latent one. Now in what you can do you can just simply grab this latent go to sample. For VAE, let's use the same VAE model. So this sample is basically the uh, sampler <coughs> or the pixel image. And then let's load another, another node which is called as preview image which will show us the image. And I will just connect this image here to this image section. Now when I run it, you will see the image back in the pixel space which has been decoded by this VAE decode. How good is that? And you can still see that prompt has been executed. And the tensor has been displayed for this encoded one. Now, if you just keep them together, you might think that these are the same. But remember, as I said, that whenever this image is, uh, pixel image is Go, uh, convert it to latent image with the VA encode there is always a loss which means that the quality of this preview image one which is a resultant image is lesser than this original image how can we check it out for that let's add another node double click and then let's type here difference and then let's get this image enhanced difference node here for the image one, this is our original image. Let's put it here. We are going to compare this original image with the resultant image which we got from decoded image, which is a pixel one. Let's put it there. And then, so I've just attached both of these here just to show you, right? Okay, now you know what I'm saying. And then let's get another preview image here. Double click. And then preview image and then join this image with this preview image let me run it there you go so what this is showing you is a difference between the original image and the resultant pixelized image wherever there is a black it means there is a loss so this is a subtle difference between these two and as you work with more and more images and you add more and more nodes and images become more high quality then the difference is palpable that is why i was saying um, that make sure that you only use this vae uh, encode decode towards the very end so that once you convert it from latent to pixel that is the time when you just want to show it that's about it also that is why people use a lot of upscalers image enhancers control net in order to improve the quality of the images produced in the, manipulated in the latent space so that when we bring them to the pixel space we also try to enhance it or upscale its quality so that is what latent space is so again just to reiterate latent space simply means a hidden space so what happens is that whenever we have our 
image in original shape as at the very left hand side this is a pixel image but stable diffusion model cannot work on it in order for it to work on it we need to convert it into latent space which means that we compressed it by multiples of by eight times as you saw it and then we manipulate it after that we use a uh, VA decoder in order to get it back into the pixel space and we also saw the difference that how it works and now you can also tell it with the help of these tensors as what exactly happened behind the scene so i hope that this was useful if you still have any questions please let me know and before i close the video let me also give a huge thanks to our good friends at agent ql who are the sponsors of this video if you are looking to uh, agent ql is a query language for extracting data from web pages quickly easily and at scale you can use the python sdk to run your queries in production using playwright and use the browser based debugger for optimizing queries in real time on any web page Agent QL is a robust alternative to Fragile XPath and DOM CSS selectors as it uses the power of AI to analyze the page structure to find the data you are looking for. So I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you are already subscribed, please do me a favor and share it among your network as it helps a lot. Thank you for watching.